Hello everyone. Today we are going to see about Xilinx 4000 series FPG. I am Sebastian Suresh, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Perry Institute of Technology. The general architecture of any FPGA will have three major blocks present in it. One is configurable logic block. Second one is programmable I/O blocks present at the periphery of each and every FPGAs. and interconnect lines which run along or run between the configurable logic blocks there is no difference in xilinx 4000 architecture also so it follows the basic fpg architecture where it has the similar three major blocks like clb an io block and a programmable interconnection we are going to see or discuss each and everything in detail a combination logic block is one which is used to implement your combinational function or a sequential function so it serves as the main core for your logic function implementation it has several logic gates built in so as to support any kind of logic function that can that is supplied by the user the second one is about interconnects interconnects can be used to connect two clbs or you can use use it to connect a clb with the io block the third one is about the io blocks io blocks are nothing but they are all they are all the means by which an external input can be supplied to your fpga or you can read whatever that is present in your fpga through that io block so it acts as a simple io unit for your fpga some of the specific features of your 4000 series of fpgas are about the clbs it has two flip flops for storing the outputs generated by the function generators present in it and it has 25 gates per combination logic block it has strams that is faster series of strams are used so as to store the internal data for the function generator as well as the output storage unit interconnects about the interconnects there there are two types mainly direct and uh, general purpose interconnect where you can connect clbs between clbs of uh, interest between adjacent in clbs or from from a longer range also and other features are like it has a synchronous single and dual port ram so to support input functionalities to supply that can be supplied to a function generator it has a internal three state buffer and the clock speed is about 80 megahertz and it uses 0.5 micrometer sram technology that is the memory units that are inbuilt have are very smaller in size when compared to its previous future, previous series of fpgas this is a look at the xilinx 4000 series of fpga as i have said it has two function generators g and f at the left you can see that and then there is a third function generator called as h so the the h type of a function generator will will receive three inputs one from g function generator and another one is from f function generator the third one will be from the external clbs so it has a um, inbuilt multiplexer with it so it selects either two of the function generator output like f or g like that and each of the function generator f and g has four inputs f1 to f4 and g1 to g4 and at the right side you can see two d flip flops so as to store the output generated from the function generators about the configurational logic block there may be two mode of operations one is either you can use it as a phi input logic which has one output function 
and you can use two function generators with the four input each and a single output function so these are the two modes of operation in a 4000 series of FPGAs it has built-in fast carry logic that is carry propagation unit so from the diagram you can see at the top left top most you have a C1 to C4 so they, those are nothing but carry output lines from the previous CLB blocks so these carry lines can be carry forwarded from one block to the other without even without the necessity of getting processed so that this kind of a carry fast carry propagation unit will increase the speed of addition process and there are uh, basically three types of routing first two uh, we have discussed earlier direct and general purpose interconnect and the third one is about a long line for connecting like it is, it is kind of a global routing so that means uh, every CLB can be connected using these long lines they they may be used either for connecting it to a clock signal or a ground and power lines and we have a RAM for then it can be programmable also as we have said the it has a reconfigurable RAM so each function generator F and G has uh, as mentioned earlier it has four inputs so that each function generator has been can be connected to a inbuilt RAM so the capacity of those two function generators will be of 16 bits that is we can store 16 combination of input variables in the RAM so that it can be supplied to the fun two function generators and since the function generator H is of uh, 3 bit we can have 8 combination of input and it has 8 bit of RAM stored in it we have then we have a uh, multiplexers set and reset control units for flip-flops which stores the output and we have a enable clock which is used to turn on your uh, flip-flops and you have direct input that is from the previous previous block of your uh, com CLB so and the third one is about the broad capability so the how the inputs can be programmed or how the inputs can be connected to your function generator the first kind is you can have both functions for example f and g functions and each can have a maximum of four variables each that is you can have two functions f and g each having a possible combinations of four inputs and the second one is of a five variable function with only a single input single output and next one is about a four variable function and plus a six variable function including the H function generator and we can also have a, a nine variable function also so these are all some of the possible combination of inputs that can be used by the function generators present inside the configurable logic block so a user have a versatile or he has more flexibility in accessing the inputs that are present inside the CLBs this is a general look of a IO, IO block present in a 4000 series of FPGA and that too specially it is for a 4000 E type of Xilinx FPGA so we have uh, on the right side we have mentioned it as IO where it specifies or it is the external port where the external devices can be connected so that pin will be of a single bit and the data can be either received or sent via that IO blocks and the left you have I1 and I2 that is that is given to the internal CLBs so for processing so that can be connected to any CLB so that the data from the external unit can be connected to the FPGAs or CLBs.
so this is what we have seen just now and the last type of uh, or the last topic in this xilinx 4000 series is about uh, interconnects so as we have seen we have uh, three types of interconnects one is fast or direct interconnect which is used to uh, connect adjacent clbs general purpose interconnect which is used to connect any two clbs that is used that is via or using a switching matrix that or uh, we can otherwise called as programmable switching matrix psm in short and we have a uh, horizontal and vertical long lines these are all used for connecting your clbs to either a power line or clock signals so this is the generalized view of uh, programmable switch matrix a programmable switch matrix is one which has a inbuilt six pass transistors so that each so that it can be connected with the corresponding clbs so each programmable switch matrix will have a, a horizontal eight lines and a vertical eight lines so that more number of clbs can be connected or routed via your programmable switch matrix so this is a generalized structure as i have said there are six pass transistors present inside the switch matrix so either you can interface any clbs via this via this switch matrix so there are uh, different types of lines used in this uh, 4000 series of apgs first one is about a uh, single length line it is for it is used to carry a single bit of information that is uh, between uh, for faster mode of communication so it can be used to uh, provide con or communicate control signals like that and a double length line is used so from the previous diagram you can see uh, beside your uh, programmable switch matrix you have a pair of double lines that run both vertically and horizontally so these are all called as uh, double lines and the eight horizontal and vertical lines are called as uh, single lines so the double length lines provides faster signal routing for intermediate distance that is if you have to communicate the adjacent clbs about or transfer data between adjacent clbs you can use a double length line and long length lines or long lines can be used to communicate or provide clock signal or uh, power lines like that and global lines are something that are used to uh, interface or route any clbs with other clbs or even io blocks these are the generalized connections that are present which specifies different types of uh, interconnections that are present so this is what we have uh, discussed just now as so i am just repeating it once again a direct interconnect is one which is used to connect neighboring clbs a general purpose interconnect is for uh, connecting a device or a clb which is having lesser fan out or you can connect two clbs which are located anywhere but this general purpose interconnect uses switching matrix to con to send a data between two clbs then uh, the last type is about a long line type of interconnect so this is mainly used for distributing clock signals where uh, each and every clb can be connected to a same kind of input like clock signal power signal like that and we are uh, entering into the final uh, stages of our video that is about uh, application and application of your fpga so you can implement any logic using your fpga so you can change your uh, logic n number of times so that is the flexibility of using a fpga so this is this will be much helpful while testing a code at circuit level and prototyping so prototyping is about uh, you can design or uh, if you are going to design a model for a particular application so fpgas are a best example or best fpgas are best suited at this level of design
reconfigurable hardware so you can add or uh, disconnect any number of CLBs for example uh, if a logic can consist of a, a similar a simpler logic function you can have it in your FPGA and if your logic consists of a big much bigger circuits you can also use the same FPGA so that is you can integrate n number of combination logic blocks so as to support your functions and it also has special computation engines so so that processing is much faster when compared to other kinds of programmable devices as per the uh, disadvantages is concerned it involves cost of the cost of manufacturing and uh, distribution of these devices and the performance when compared to other types of ASICs like full custom ASIC and semi custom ASIC the performance is much lesser and it consumes high power when compared to other kinds of ASICs so thank you all for listening hope you all have a good day